Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to share the solution of the challenge that we shared last week. At the beginning, I would like to thank each and every one send me his solution on email. And at the end of this video, we are going to give a shout for their names. Let's start by have a look on the challenge itself and reminding ourselves what exactly was required. The challenge was simply that I have a simple table like the one on the left hand side. I have five columns, the ID name, and then three columns for the amounts Jan, February, and March. And then I want to load this into Power Query. And in my output table, I need only the names and the amount for the last month. Meaning that when I get the new data, let's say for April, I take a copy of this data. And when I paste it here beside this table, the table will expand. And when I refresh the query, right click and refresh, I'll get also the month of April, only the name column and the last month of amount column. To be honest, my plan was to share with you only one solution based on M code functions. However, when I received your solutions, I noticed that it's divided into two sections. Some of you prefer to work on the user interface and some other preferred to work with M code functions. That's why I decided to share with you actually two kinds of solution. The first one, I call it user interface. So we are going to concentrate on the user interface. The second one, I can say it's a hybrid solution. So we are going to use some of the feature in the interface, but also we are going to use some M code functions. And at the end, I'm going to show you also how you can convert the hybrid solution into a one line code using M code functions. Let's go right to Excel and see how we can do this together. I'm going to start by sending my data into the Power Query. I already converted the data set into a table format. If you go to the table design, you can notice the name of the table, which is basically data. I can just select any cell inside the data set, right click and get data from table range. This will trigger the Power Query editor. On the right hand side, I have two applied steps. First one is source and second one is change type. Let me get rid of the change type and I'm going to change the name of the query into something like user interface as I'm going to start by try to use the user interface in order to solve the challenge. I'm going to start by just removing the unwanted column. I'm going to stay only with the column called name and the column called Marsh. I'm going to start by selecting the first one and then push and hold the control key and then select the other one, right click and remove other columns. Let's look at the formula bar. You will notice that I have an M code function called table.selectColumns and you can see that the name of the columns are hard coded inside the formula bar. And this is exactly the thing that I want to change. I need something dynamic can replace exactly the name of the last column inside this function. So every time I add a new column, it will select automatically the last column. I'm going to leave the last step for the moment and I'm going back to the source step and I'm going to insert some steps in between. This for sure will result in an error in the second step or the last step. However, I will go back to it at the end and I'm going to solve or I'm going to fix this error. The very first thing I need here is the list of the column names. In order to get a list of the column names using the user interface, I'm going to start by demoting the header. So I'm going to make the first row containing the headers of the table. I can do that from the transform ribbon. On the left hand side, use first row as a header. When you click on the little black arrow on the right hand side, you will see an option called use headers as first row. Just click on it. By the way, every time we try to insert a step, it will ask you if you want to insert a step. And every time we're going to click on insert, no problem at all. And you can see that the first row now contains the headers of the table. So the second step, I need all of them to be in one column. I need all the headers to be in one column. In order to achieve this, I'm going to transpose this table. Transpose is basically converting the rows into headers and headers into rows. You can achieve this by clicking the transpose option on the transform ribbon as well. Once you click on it, again, insert step. I'm happy to insert and you can see that I have now the columns in the rows and the rows in the columns. And if you check the first column, the very first column, it contains a list of all the header names. I need only this column. 
I can just select the column, right click and remove other column. This is easy one. But instead, I'm going to go to the formula bar and I'm going to open a square bracket and carefully I'm going to write the name of the column, which is basically column one in this case. I can just hit enter and you will see that I'm going to have a list of all the column names starting with the ID and at end I have the last column which is basically Marsh. I think so far so good. Now I need to keep only the last item of this list. Again using the user interface I am now inside the list tools and I'm inside the transform ribbon. On the left hand side you will see that an option called keep items. If you just click on it, you will see that something called keep bottom items. Once you click on it, again insert step. I'm happy, I'm going to insert a step. And it will ask you how many items you need to keep. I need to keep only one item. I'm going to type one and then OK. And here you go. I have a list containing only one item as you can see. But the issue here that I don't need a list. I need this item as a value. In order to do so, I can just right click and use the drill down and this will convert it into a single value or I can go to the formula bar and carefully after the close bracket of the function list.lastIn, I can use the curly bracket and type zero and this is telling Power Query that I need the first item from this list. But why I'm typing zero when I need only the first item or the item number one? Because as we mentioned before, the power query is zero based. Start counting from zero. So when I hit enter, you will see that I have the name of the column in a single value in the step called kept last item. I need to change the name of this step. Right click and rename. Let me call it last column and hit enter. And let's check together the last step which is basically removed other columns as I told you it's now giving an error but this is no problem at all and let's again look at the formula bar and see the requirement for this function the first requirement of the table dot select columns is a table and you can see it's now pointing to or referring to the previous step which is basically last column but this is not a table at all however I need the table inside the source step so I need to reference the first, the very first step, which is basically the source inside this function. So I'm going carefully before the comma, delete, and then start to type source very carefully. If I hit enter, now it's working. But again, the name of the last column is still hard to code it. I can just select, double click and select. And I'm going to change it to the variable that we have in the previous step, which is basically last column. Then the check mark or hit enter and here you go. No change. You can notice there is no change right now. But anytime you add a new column to your table, it will always select the name of the last column and your query will be changing dynamically. Now we are ready. Let's go to home, close and load, close and load to table, existing worksheet. Let's select something like M3 and then click on OK. And here you go. You have your 20 rows loaded. Let's try to add April. Control C, Control V. Going back to the query, right click and refresh. And you can notice it's working perfectly. Let's try the hybrid solution. I'm going to select the same query, double click to reopen the Power Query Editor. I'm going to duplicate this query, right click and duplicate. Let me call it this time hybrid. I need to delete all the steps. I'm going to select the second one, right click and delete until end and then delete. And again, this time I need also the list of column names. However, this time I'm going to use a very simple M code function called table.columnNames. This is an easy one. Let me add a custom step by just clicking the FX button. Once you click on it, it will reference the previous step. After the equal and before the reference to the previous step, I'm going to write my function table.columnNames and then I'm going to open a bracket and close the bracket after the reference to the source table and just hit enter. And here you go. You have a list of all 
the column names. Now I need also to keep the last item of the list but in a form of value. In order to do so, I'm going to use another function before the table.columnNames function, it's called list.last. So I'm going to type list and then dot and last, and then I'm going to open a bracket and close the bracket at the end and then hit enter. And here you go, you have a single value for April. I can just rename this step, right click and rename, and I'm going to call it last column. Now I need to filter this one. I can just go back and add a new step and use the function table.selectColumns. However, I'm going to do a very simple trick I'm always using when I want to write a function that I'm not very sure about how to write it. I'm going to select the previous step and I'm going to do the same action that we did using the interface. I'm going to select the names column and then the last column, right click and remove other columns. No problem, insert a step. And this will generate the function as you can see here i can just change the order and again i need to change the parameters so i'm going to change the last column to be source and the hard-coded name of the last month to last column and that's it i'm going to do the check mark and all done for the hybrid solution only three steps if you check the previous one it's five steps so we managed to reduce it to only three steps with a very simple codes, only two function, actually three function, table.select columns, and here we used table.column names and list.last. So the last one is one line of code only. So I'm going to duplicate this as well. Duplicate and let me call it this time one line code and hit enter. If you go back to the last column step, you can see that I used list.last column and table.column names and all referring to the source step. If I take a copy of this, the, the two functions together, control C, and I go to the removed column items, you can go back to the last parameter, which is basically referring to the previous step. I can just copy the code here and I can just hit the check mark and it's working perfectly. Now you can go back, you can delete this step and all working perfectly so you have only two steps you have the source step and then you go for the remove other columns and you have all the code all together table dot select columns and inside this function you have also two function list dot last and table dot column names referring the source step as well now all done let's go to home close and load close and load two now i'm loading two queries so I'm going to use the only create connection and hit OK. And I'm going back to the queries and connection pane. I'm going to change the loading option. Right click the first one, load to table and existing worksheet. Let me select P and click on OK. Again, one line code, right click, load to table, existing worksheet and S and click on OK. I have the three queries loaded. Let's try to add may and june together and i'm going to refresh the three queries together i'm going to data refresh all and refresh all all will be refreshed together and here you go three queries are working perfectly first one using user interface the second one is a bit of a hybrid solution and the last one we translated into two lines of code to be honest i added only the source it just generated automatically and i added to the source one line of code. Now the fun part, the wall of fame. A big thank you to everyone participated and sent me his solution over the email. Actually, I'm going to thank each and every one by name, but please excuse me if I mispronounce any of the names. So we have Ibrahim Ozazid, Shehab Sagir. Ahmed Nagib, Ashraf Hawash, Haytham Tahan, Mamadu Ado, Ihab Ammar, Mahmoud Mansour, Fathi Taha, Hisham Ben Tama, Ricky Peng, Jerry De La Sala, M. Osman Ali Al Tamash, Anthony Sovi, Noah Oren, Mahmoud Bani Asadi, Mr. Samir Tubail, Ahmed Chanawani, Mohammed El Ziki, and Mohammed Farid. Thank you very much, everyone. I'll be posting more challenges. Please stay tuned and see you and bye.